Last time I finished my overpriced build and drove off with Vitek kicking and looking like a hero. Not so much. I was immediately chasing down issues, like my throttle getting stuck in this clip here. Then later on, my car was idling like this. Turns out my throttle position sensor was contacting the firewall and messing up the feedback to the ECU. Easy fix though. Then my handbrake was stuck on one side. Just move it back and some lubrication, easy fix. Then my coolant started leaking. It was a poorly cut stock line, so I found a similar one at a local store and cut it and refit it. Easy fix. Let me get your boots on. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's what people want to see. Then I got a flat on my brand new tires, so I had to plug it. Easy fix. That'll do it. I got the solution. Then I had a mystery oil leak develop that continued to grow, which is where I draw the line in the sand. These issues were compounding, and it was time to dive deep. I called in some reinforcements and got to work. So we start by removing the rear bumper, the crash bar, and the exhaust. When you take something you built apart, it's a good time to reflect on your handiwork and really start to appreciate it. This is just for own personal reference. That cooler line I hate. Those empty vacuum lines up there I hate. The battery tray I hate. The intake that disconnects constantly I hate. Everything back from the firewall I hate. Next, we continue with the exhaust headers and begin disconnecting the charge harness. Yeah, well, what are you doing, Kevin? Taking, oh, taking off the starter. Yeah, it's oh, shit. Next, we drain the oil and check if there's any surprises waiting for us. Because, yeah. like, mechanically, it's sound because I built it. Now we can disconnect the main harness and pull it all through the firewall. Yeah. <laughs> the next step is to remove the subframe, so we need to disconnect all the suspension linkages. While they're working on the suspension, I began draining the coolant. No cap? Yeah. There it is. Nice. It's kind of cool. I'm like redoing my old videos, but with a nicer camera, so I have, I'll have a direct comparison. Except these won't be nearly as good and no one's going to watch them. one thing that's not translated. Everybody thinks it's glamorous working on cars, but... Oh, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> proves my point exactly. <laughs> Every single bolt. That's not Don't do... It would work. You know how you just said you wish you worked It would out? work. It would work. Now we remove the axles from each side. Oh, yeah. Fix the motor layer. Oops. <laughs> That's, that's another thing that I think I'm too Nobody. dumb to have a clean car because I do that stuff all the time. Next, we unbolt the rear motor mount and remove the subframe. Right, now remove the grounds, coolant line, shift linkages, and throttle cable. Pull it up and out. Now we can support the motor from underneath and begin unbolting the motor mounts. See what I'm saying? I don't think it's start, start uh, pulling it back. That'll yes, yes, yes. We have a fuel line that we forgot to disconnect. Uh, just the battery in the house, though. And then turn. Now no, sp spin moving. the motor on the thing, if you can. Other way, other, other way, way, other way. Right? Yeah, you guys got it. You don't need me. Alright. She's out. With everything out, we can see the extent of the contact the motor and the firewall were making. The alternator and intake manifold were smashing into the firewall, which may explain some of the NVH that has been driving me crazy. As usual, a temporary solution became permanent. So first, we'll get rid of the ugly capped coolant port with a proper plug.
The whole exhaust side of the motor is coated with oil, so the plan is to replace all the gaskets on this side. First we start by removing the VTEC pressure switch and the solenoid valve. This looks like it could be a potential source of the leak, so we can continue by replacing the seals for both. So my stupid caveman hand strike again, and I broke two out of three bolts using the torque wrench. We gotta order some replacement hardware, and the next time, we'll hopefully learn our lesson. Until then, thanks for watching and take care.